Say about this group of players, the recognition, and was Virgil perhaps a little unfortunate not to win the main award? I think I said everything about that. What I had to say, to be honest, it's um, and it's uh, things like this. There are the decision is made by, by in this case, by journalists, right? So that's how people see it. It's absolutely no problem, and I see it slightly different. It's, it's, I think it's normal that a lot of people see it slightly different. Um, but that's absolutely no problem. I said Lionel Messi, I said for probably 500,000 times in my life already, is um, yeah probably the best player I saw during my lifetime. That's how it is. Um, and so very early in my life, Pele, Franz Beckenbauer, so Diego Maradona, and then you see Lionel Messi more often and stuff like this. And I have no clue how the others would have um, played nowadays. Probably as well, pretty exceptional. But Lionel is here now, and he. Right, this all won it six times, and um, now Cristiano five times. So, but the last season was actually, if you really go for only that season, then I cannot remember a more impressive season of a defender ever. Honestly, so it would have been right as well if Virch would have won it. Now I heard it's pretty, was pretty close, so it was okay. Um, what Bert said afterwards is uh, absolutely exactly how he is as a as a person. Fantastic. So it's all, it's all said about that. And a group of players, we, we won the Champions League. We played an outstanding season. We got 97 points. It's normal that people see that as well. It was we cannot do that with the outperforming players. Um, and so I'm really happy for them. I was not not sure 17 or so was trend. If I'm right or somewhere there, who would have thought that two three years ago? So it's nice, but it's last season. <laughs> It's last season, so um, I think now pretty much um, all awards are done, um, and um, we can go for, for all the boys can go for a new awards if they want. Looking ahead to this game, then Marco Silva, your counterpart, he's under intense pressure going into this. As a fellow manager, do you have a, a little bit of sympathy with him, and does he, in some ways, make this game even more difficult because Everton? Are scrapping for their lives towards the bottom of the table. First and foremost, of course, I have sympathy for him. It's, I, I know how difficult the life of a manager can be, and um, but I think the last thing Marco needs now is that I feel kind of sorry for him. I don't, but I'm 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 I'm, I'm really on his side because I know um, about the job. So that's it. And I saw for me the most important game for the analyze was absolutely the last one against Leicester and it was really close and they were good and they changed system and that looked really well <laughs> looked really well settled after maybe one week training with it um, looked really good caused Leicester a lot of problems um, had their chances had big it was 1-1 I think um, Moiskin had that really smart finish unfortunately for Everton um, didn't go in the goal or didn't went in the goal but um, that was an open game um, in a lot of moments, of course, with the dominant Leicester side. But that was good. In all other situations, that would be a positive sign. I'm not sure how Everton is seeing that. I don't know. But we expect Everton anyway at their best. We, this is the, the standout game for both teams during the season. And um, both teams always showed that and respected that. And um, so, yeah, we have to make sure that we are ready. Pep Guardiola told us yesterday at his press conference that he won't be signing any players in January. Did that surprise you a little bit that one of your main title rivals won't strengthen? Or is that January transfer window be becoming more and more difficult for the top clubs to recruit key players? Oh, I've, uh, I'm not here to speak about uh, the Man City transfer window. Am I surprised? I hear it now. Um, first time, so um, am I surprised? No. Um, but it's not important. Um, and about us, it's always the same. We don't speak about it. Um, we are pretty much always ready. If we can do something what helps us, we, we, we try to do it. If not, then not. That's how it is. That's, yeah. General windows may be much is it more difficult than the other window. Don't know. I think this, the summer window is meanwhile really difficult because of the different moments when it closes in Europe. To be 100%. That's really 
uh, that makes it really difficult. Um, and we'll see how that will be in the future. But it looks like um, this window only, that the summer window only hurts the English clubs and doesn't help them. Um, because if you only can buy until a specific moment, but everybody else can buy until pretty much mid of the season, um, it does, it's not cool. So, but that's not for the moment. So I, I didn't think about that at all. So it's just, um, yeah, we will see. Logan Everton, 17th in the Premier League, about 26 points behind yourselves. Are they found themselves a little bit unfortunate to be in the position that they're in at the moment? If they're unfortunate to be in a position? Considering well, some of the last minute goals perhaps that have gone against them, does the table tell the full truth? No, <laughs> no. In this, uh, the table tells the full truth at the end of the season, no, not in that early stages, that's how it is, but um, come on, if you go through the Everton squad, then you would say, well, that's a really good squad, and nobody denies that, not no Marco, nobody, it's just why it's not clicking 100% so far, I, I don't know really. Few really um, difficult injuries, especially the Gomes one, uh, it's really difficult, and um, they had um, Delph was now injured, but he's maybe back, but um, very, very important player for, for them as well. So that's how it is. And then if you have kind of, an, if you have not a positive run, it must not even be a negative run. If you don't have a positive run, then these kind of things can always happen. Um, a lot of pressure there, obviously. Um, Everton is a very ambitious club, rightly so. And um, if it doesn't go the right way, then the pressure increases pretty quick. That's, that's the situation. But um, yeah. They are not the only ones huh, in, this, in this situation, so this league is really difficult. It's really difficult for all of us, and um, we have to respect that, and that's what we do. We've touched our managers being under pressure. We've seen three sackings in the last couple of weeks. There are a few more managers in the Premier League under pressure at the moment. You obviously spent seven years at Dortmund, four years here at Liverpool. Do you think managers are being given enough time in the Premier League? I personally, yes. That's how it is. Um, in general, I don't know. I really can only speak about my situation, and obviously, I have never felt uh, in doubt. But that's maybe very comfortable. I have no clue why it was like this. Um, and um, but in general, it's uh, what can I say? If you are in the job, if you have the job like mine or or, or or the others in the Premier League, then there's there's pressure there. We have to deliver. That's how it is. And if it doesn't work out, then we have to. The, the manager has to try it somewhere else, and the club has to try it with somebody else. I think the most important thing that before you sign a manager as well is that that the people who, who make the signing look for the right things because out there are a lot of a lot of really good managers. So, but it needs to fit to the club. It needs to fit to the to the ambitions. That's how it is. Then everybody can be happy at the end. That's that's. Um, the truth as well, but in general, the pressure and the decisions are made too quick. Of course, um, it's coming up too quick. The pressure and the decisions are made um, are made too quick because of the uh, people think they cannot reach a target anymore. Are not patient enough? I don't know exactly, but um, it's of course that's the case. Um, but I have no real idea about it because um, I was not in that situation so far. Thank God. I didn't run through my living room and did celebrate. I was celebrating. Um, yeah, I think it's for both. Not exactly what you what you wish for. That you think, oh, far wow, nice again. Um, but I, be, I have no problem playing Everton. It's a big game. It's a, a great, it's a great team, great club, big opponents. But yeah. It's a, for us the first round for them as well, and then um, you play immediately. We, we are last year we had Chelsea, I think, in the same round. Was it Chelsea? Wolves. 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 Oh, sorry, I mix up the cups. And when did we play Chelsea at home? <laughs> Oops. Um, so um, we have, obviously we go always the hard way, and that's uh, that's uh, it's our way. Obviously, we cannot change that. Yeah, but it's we have time. <laughs> Until we have to prepare that Everton game, now we prepare this Everton game and um, hopefully we do the right things. And I just wonder, the way that the Derby game was won last December at Anfield with, with Divock's goal, did that almost lay the foundations or at least add another facet to this Liverpool team in terms of giving you the belief and the to, to keep going? And we didn't see it like that, to be honest. Um, um, sometimes, yes, a win can give you a boost for the next couple of weeks, but it wasn't that moment. It was just a moment. 
Um, in this game, there happened a few really great things. I remember um, Joe Gomez saved the ball from the line in an in a incredible situation. So Everton was good that night, obviously. Um, it was an intense game. Um, so there were a few winning moments. And then finally, the, the very strange goal, of course, in my celebration, which I said sorry for because I had to and it was right. So um, will not happen again, and not even in a derby. But in that moment, um, yeah, it was pretty, a pretty cool moment. But that's um, for us obviously long ago, um, pretty much a year, and uh, for them as well. So nothing to do with the game tomorrow night. There are enough other stories around this game, um, and we have to be at the end really focused on the on the important parts of the game, and they all are on the pitch and not around. A Levinson's record at Anfield in the Westside Derby is, is so bad. Is there, is there any danger that this, there is there any degree of complacency that creeps into a game like this? I didn't understand. I didn't understand all the rest of what you said, but the, 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 I know what you mean. So yes, of course. Um, that's um, always like this. Look, um, we, we we never we don't have to speak about quality and quality differences and stuff like this. Are we in a in a better moment uh, in the table? Yes, of course, that's obvious. But um, in in a, in a game itself, whichever team we would play, who are in a much better moment than we are, for example, we would love to win. And if it's a derby, even more so. So um, that's um, the, the, the stats. I, from my point of view, help rather or um, they help rather Everton than us. Um, because they want to strike back, they want to show that it's, they can do differently, they can sort a lot of problems in one game, maybe. And um, so, and we have, a, we have a very, very important football game for us, but that must be enough for us. So that's how it is. And um, everybody thinks there's no doubt about this team, how much they are um, um, connected to this club. And when you are connected to this club, then this is a game of the end, whichever situation you are, you want to win. And um, that's what we have to show. Um, yeah, Joel needs a bit more time, so it's it's healing, but it's not um, exactly um, how we wished for. So he needs a bit more more time. So that will take a while, and um, the, the rest is um, the rest is fit. The long-term injury is not in, but the, 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 all the others are, are fit and available. Thank you. Thank you.